Okay, let's start. Uh, hello, everyone. Maybe good evening, good afternoon, and good morning. I'm Zhao Zhicong from Institute for National Parks, Tsinghua University, and the Department of Landscape Architecture, School of Architecture, Tsinghua University. So today's topic is about the national parks and the protected areas in China. So let's see the topic. Establishing national uh, protected area system with national parks as the mainstay in China. Do you think it is a very Chinese statement? Okay. In this talk today, we are going to have two sets of keywords. The first group is national park, national parks in China. So what is a national park? This issue has been discussed in the previous lecture, so I, I think you probably know what is a national park. But what is a national park in China? And why does China want to establish the national park system? What's the characteristics of the China's national park and how to establish a national park in China? Okay, the second group is protected area. From which comes the system of the protected areas and the protected areas with national park as the mainstay. So the questions about this group of keywords are why does China propose the establishment of a national park system and how to establish the protected area system with national park as the mainstay. So these two sets of keywords and the questions they bring will be the main contact of our lecture. The first part is National Park of China. The second part, the case study of the Three River South National Park, Sanjiangyuan National Park. We will see how does China build the national park. And the third part is the protected area system with the national park as the mainstay. Through the case study at the fourth part, uh, fourth part uh, I will introduce our thinking about and the proposal of how to establish China's national park system. Okay, let's see the first, National Park of China. As a brief review, in the previous lecture, we learned that the global national park movement began more than 100 years ago and originated from the US, United States and the United Kingdom. The Yellowstone National Park in the US was the first national park globally to be declared by federal legislation, by the national law. So it is the first national park. After that, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and other countries have established their own national parks, uh, one after an another. The IUCN, the International Union for Conservation of Nature, defines the national park as the national parks are large natural and near natural areas set aside to protect large scale ecological process along with the complement of species and the ecosystem's characteristics of the area, which also provide a fundamental for environmental and culturally compatible spiritual, scientific, educational, recreational, and visitor opportunities. After the national parks, the international designation related to nature conservation have been developed, such as the protected area system, world heritage system, and biosphere reserves, and the Ramsar sites of the important wetlands. So in these more than 100 years of the global national park movement, what about the cause of nature conservation in China? China has started the construction of nature reserves in 1956. 1956. 
In the early days of our new countries, there are 100 things to do. But with the advice of scientists, China still contributes to the nature conservation. So in the following lecture, Professor Liu Xuhua will talk about this topic with you. In 1982, we established the first batch of the national scenic and historical areas. After that, the Mount Huangshan, Mount Huashan, Mount Taishan, Mount Wutai, Jiu Zhai Gou, all these famous mountains and rivers and lakes have become national scenic and historical areas. This part will be introduced by Professor Zhuang Youbo next. So as time advances and China's national power grows, we build other types of protected areas, such as the forest parks, the geoparks, the wetland parks, and so on. At the same time, we are also actively applying for some world-class titles, such as the UNESCO uh, World Heritage Site, the Ramsar Wetland Sites, the Global Geoparks, and the Biosphere Reserves. Up to now, there are 9,200 protected areas in China, accounting for about 18% of the country's land area. Like protected areas in other countries around the world, they played an important role. Protecting the biodiversity, providing ecosystem service, coping with the climate change, and increasing people's welfare. So, China has made remarkable achievements in nature conservation. Why should we establish national parks? That's a question. <laughs> so, uh, anyone has the answer in your mind? Okay. National park. Thank you. Okay, good. Very good. You you, you did something. You you, you learned something. <laughs> okay. Uh, for this lecture, everyone answer the question will have a reward. We have the books. Okay. Uh, later. <laughs> so, why should we establish national parks? Uh, she said some reasons. So the simple uh, answer is that we still have some problems to solve. Right. So let's see the problems our protected areas have. The first problem is fragmentation and weakness of conservation force. In another word, lack of system, low conservation efficiency. Due to the overall bottom-up declaration system, the protected areas have failed to present an integrated conservation effect. The responsibility for conservation is scattered among various departments. Like the diagram, many departments, many central departments of our government responsible for the protected areas. The construction depart, department, uh, environmental, land, tourism, and culture. So in China, we call it nine dragons ruling water. 
So it is from, uh, come from uh, ancient Chinese mythology. In China, the dragon regulates the water, the river, the rain, and other water causes. So when nine dragons come to control the water, it may lead to confusions and efficiency of the authority and the power. So finally, the system will be dysfunction. So this, this is the situation we have to avoid, avoid. We have to avoid the nine dragon ruling water situation. So that's the problem one. The second problem is the legislation is lagging, as her said, as she said. The legislation, the law. Okay, there is no particular law on protected areas. The coverage of the resource law is incomplete, and the number and the level of the regulations are low. So as you can see from the table, nature reserve and scenic and historical areas, these are the two types of protected areas with the highest legal level in China. The state council approved the, their establish, establishment and issue the regulations for them. The other protected areas are only approved by the central department and management according to the departmental regulations. This is not matched with the important values of our protected areas. The third problem the boundaries are intertwined. So uh, uh, taking the Shenongjia National Park pilot as an example, we made a diagram of the boundaries with each circle is uh, representing a protected area. Each circle is uh, one protected area and each color representing one type of the protected area. So you can see the boundaries of the protected areas. Some of the boundaries are lapped. Some of them are intersect, right? So it brings a lot of trouble to managers. One piece of land has different protection objectives because they belong to different protected areas. And one piece of land has different management requirements because they have different higher level agencies. So there must be many conflicts. Also, it brings some confusions in public perception. Also, we have some problems in fundings and other problems in community regulations, community benefits, resource inventory, research, planning, and conservation measures. Therefore, in November 2013, the central government level, the, at the central government level, the establishment of a national park system was proposed. This concept emerged from the requirement to establish a systematic and complete system of the ecological civilization. After that, the central government has issued a series of policies and set up 10 national park pilot areas. Under the requirements of the two documents, the pilot proposal and the general proposal. We began to reform the governance system, the funding mechanism, the community participation, and daily management. By 2018, National Park Administration was established, finally ending the situation of nine dragons ruling water. At COP15 of the Convention on Biological Diversity held recently, President Xi announced officially establishment of five national parks of China, marking the beginning of a new chapter of construction of national parks in China. So 
These are the five national parks, three River South National Park, San Jiangyuan National Park, Grand Panda National Park, Giant Panda National Park, Northeast China Tiger and Leopard National Park, Hainan Tropical Rainforest National Park, and Wuyishan National Park. So, are there any differences between China's national park and other countries' national parks of the world? We will analyze the five national parks to get some basic characteristics of China's national parks. So one feature is obvious after I show you this set of data. So let's see. What is the characteristics? What's the difference? Who has the answer? Comparison of national park size in China and the United States. It is too simple to answer, right? Okay. Um, national parks cover a, a larger area. Okay, that is simple, right? Large. <laughs> that is simple. Large, large area covering a huge area. Yes. Uh, so why, why we need such large national parks? It depends on the geographical background of our country. From the resource uh, aspect, we do have great national and, uh, natural and cultural resource to protect. We are the third largest country in the world and we have the abundant landforms, diverse ecosystems and a large area of wilderness. Okay, let me show you another set of data to see the second characteristics. With the large population in the world, many farmers, uh, forest, forestry workers, herdsmen, and even urban residents live within and around the national parks. And also the national, uh, the population distribution are also extremely uneven. So in Wuyishan National Park, the population density is more than 31 people per square kilometer, and that number become half person per square kilometer in San Jiangyuan National Park, but also with the total number of the 60,000 people in the national park. So the second characteristics is not difficult to understand, is a high population density and a large number of people. The third, the large area and uh, large population brings big problems. We have the structural contradictions like development versus conservation, the, uh, the urbanization versus protected area expansion, and the food security uh, versus ecological security. We also have some restrictive conditions, such as the complex the land ownership situation, the survival needs of the local community, and also the complex in ethnic and religious issues. So all of this make China's national park system face uncommon difficulties. The third characteristic is difficult. So these three features also give rise to two other aspects. One of which is that the process of China's construction of the national park is a top-down process from the central government. Yeah showing the determination of the policymakers to tackle the chaos in the field of nature conservation and the great importance the central government attaches to the ecological issues. So the reform of national park construction is so strong, so fast and so effective, it is rare in the world. The last feature, the strictest protection. 
National parks in China are different from those in America or most countries' national parks. Most national parks use conservation as their goal. They not only focus on protection of natural, historic, historical, scenic resources, but also emphasize the recreational opportunities. But while ours in China, we, our, the word we use is the preservation. We insist on the strictest protection. This phrase has been repeated in central government's documents. Actually, maybe uh, China will be the only country that our national park is the strangest national park in the terms of ecological protections. So here is a question for you. Why? Why should we insist on the protection first, the strictest protection of our national parks? That is a homework for you for this lecture. And maybe we can talk about it later after my lecture because you can get the reward and uh, I will, you will find some clues in my lecture. Okay. So keep it in mind. Why should we insist on the strictest protection of our national parks? Okay, these are the five features that we can now see of our national parks covering a huge area, supporting a large population, facing many difficulties, top-down motive mechanism, and the strictest protection. Another point of knowledge I have to mention is the three major principles of our national parks in China. They are ecological protection as a top priority, national, uh, ecological protection first, right? The second, national representation. The third, public benefit for all people. National representation, it is easy to understand, like all the national parks around the world, our national park represents our country, represents the area with the most important ecosystems, the unique landscapes, the best heritage, and the richest biodiversity. Public benefit for all people. That means the benefit of the national park should be available to all peoples, to all people, visitors, to visitors, to local people, to landowners, to the stakeholders, to you, to me, to us, to our generation and future generations. So ecological protection as a top priority. It is similar to the most stringent national park, the most strictest protection. Yeah. The reason is what? That is your homework. <laughs> okay, next. Let me take you on a journey to see how our national park practice these three principles. What do you see in this picture, in this photo? This is a photo I took in the Sanjiangyuan area in 2017. When we were commissioned to prepare the visiting and interpretation planning for the pilot area of Sanjiangyuan National Park. The location was Kekesili. That investigation left me a very deep impression. Not only because I had never experienced such a changeable weather in Sanjiangyuan, I never been in a such bumpy car because we are in the white land. The car is like this all day. I never experienced the uh, uncomfortable feelings that I cannot move my legs and uh, cannot catch my breath when I saw the, my destination is just in front of me. I cannot move. But also because after all this experience, I saw so close to see this 
wildlife. The legendary wild yak, yak, yeah, the Tibetan antelope, the wolves, yeah, it's very close to me. And also the bears. Did you see the bears? There are four bears in the photo. There is a mama bear with her three baby bears. Uh, they are running from the mountain Kekesili to the lake to, uh, to have some drink. And we drove close behind in the white band of Kekesili and with the experience, the ranger in, her, in, in his track, we cannot catch the running speed of the bears. We cannot catch them. <laughs> Uh, actually, that's because the ranger said we cannot, uh, we cannot go very near to the bears because the sound of the truck will disturb the baby bears. So we followed them and we watched them play by the river for a while and then they ran back to the mountains. At that time, Maybe because I was a new mom at that time. Uh, my daughter was one year old in 2017, and I was thinking that it, it will be possible for me, for us, for our babies, for our descendants, and for them, for their babies and their descendants to enjoy, to all enjoy the national parks together. So you must want to see what Sanjiang Yuan looks like. Let's watch the video. Thank you. 
Okay, three river source national park, Sanjiangyuan National Park, located on the Qinghai Tibetan Plateau, and is an important ecological barrier for China, even for Asia, and it is known as the water tower of China and Asia. It is rich in biodiversity, and it is also the most fragile and sensitive place of the ecosystems. So the area of the national park now is where? 190,000 square kilometers. It is larger than Hebei province of China. <laughs> and the pilot area, the pilot national park, the area is 123,000 square kilometers. It is equal to half New Zealand. And in the pilot area, there are uh, 64,000 local people. Almost, uh, uh, almost all of them are Tibetans believe, believe in the Buddhism. And uh, uh, all of them, almost all of them are herdsmen. The grassland is belong to national, belongs to nation, yeah, national owned grassland, but all, all of the grassland is contract to the families. Okay, uh, one third of the 64,000 local people were poor at the pilot area. So let's see how does Sanjiangyuan built the national park. First, the Sanjiangyuan National Park Administration was established to integrate the original department and the personnel involved to the management of this area. So the unified management of natural resource achieved. After the establishment of the pilot national park, other types of the protected areas were eliminated. So this solved the problem of the Nine Dragon ruling water situation, right? And the general management plan and ecological protection plan were developed to clarify the conservation objectives and uh, the, the conservation and the restoration measures. Special plans have also been developed for the institutional policy, the community effect control, and the livelihood and the concession. So the problem of the spatial overlap has been was solved, and uh, ecological protection has been strengthened. In order to truly establish a national park and explore a path to achieve the public benefit for all, we were invited to do the plan for visiting and interpretation. We planned the suitable routes for the different visitors, uh, and we did the plan for interpretation with different theme content and the different levels. At the same time, we recognize that the vulnerability and the sensitivity of the resource of the ecosystem. So we have also designed a detailed system to guarantee that the impacts of the visitors are effectively monitored and controlled. So we set six policies for visiting impact control, such as the visitor reservation system, the herdsman inter interpreter and driver with each visitor team, reward for low carbon experience, national park visitor behavior credit, manage of the self-driving and visitor feedback and tracking system. To help the local herdsmen, we fully consider the local people can participate in the visiting project. We set up seven types of positions with drivers, interpreters, guides, maintainers, monitors, cook, singers, and dancers. 
we calculate the number of the local people's positions that can involve in each community and we confirmed with the community leaders that they can have enough herdsmen with the appropriate ability and the training to get the job. Why we designed the activity for indigenous participation? Why should local people have a relationship with the visitors from outside? First, the service provided by the herdsmen by the local people can indeed earn some extra money, which can reduce their direct use of the natural resource, the conception of the natural resource. This is one of the ways to achieve the ecological protection first. Secondly, Sanjiang Yuan is, uh, is located in a high altitude area, lack of oxygen and uh, with the changeable weather. So the visitors, the first time visitors need to be guided and taken care of. So the local people are the best guys. The third, the local traditional culture is unique. Our research found that each family has their own stories, their beliefs, their behaviors, their daily work at home are their stories, not ordinary stories. It's the story about how they th thrive, survive in the unique environmental how they respect nature, how they use the natural resource wisely, and how they live harmony with nature. <clears throat> so this is the best interpretation. This kind of story should be told by themselves. And this is the real story of China. We are pleased to see that the Sanjiangyuan National Park has begun to gradually refine and implement our proposals in the term, in the form of concessions. So uh, in the Ansai Grand Kanye, it's the source of the Lantang River with the help of the NGOs, the local herders cooperatives are the concessioners began to, hold, uh, to host the visitors to ob observe the wildlife, to observe the snow leopard. And uh, a private company began to explore how the trekking, the hiking experience could be realized, employing local staff to do the service work based on our planning and the more detailed visitor surveys. And a professional outdoor water spot team have begun to train local captain to explore the rafting as a way to experience the Lantang River. Sorry. At last but not least, Sanjiang Yuan has established a one family, one ranger system. It means each family are assigned a person to serve as a ranger for the national parks. The National Park Administration pays a salary of about 1,800 RMB per month. So this salary can basically, basically cover the monthly living expense for the herder family one month at that area. The main task of the rangers include uh, patro patrolling the mountains, observing and recording wildlife and uh, checking for illegal entries and activities. So in this process, many herder photographers and uh, wildlife scholars have emerged 
because they know their place best. What they patrol and guard is their own homeland. So you can see from these photos that they are very happy and satisfied, proud. As I mentioned earlier, at the beginning of the pilot, uh, one third of the 64,000 local people were poor, right? In 2020, all of them, all of the people within the Sanjiangyuan National Park have been get out of, get out of poverty with all the country. So this is basically the story of Sanjiangyuan was how to build a national park. They have established a new management agency. They set many policies, made multiple conservation efforts, tried concession, concession in terms of visiting, and they create a new way of one family, one ranger system to help the local herdsmen to participate in the management of national parks. Another question is, why are the many efforts Sanjiangyuan National Park successful? So this is how the Sanjiangyuan National Park practice these three major principles. Let's have a review. Ecological protection as a top priority, national representation and public benefit for all people. So why Sanjiangyuan has been successful? Perhaps all of this, all of what has mentioned is the reason for its success. But I think there is another thing. There is another point is very important is the culture in that area. The local Tibetan have a long standing traditional culture of loving nature, of respecting nature and living in harmony with nature. This culture continues to these days. It is a very precious heritage for us to build our national parks. It is what we should learn from the local people. The second, Suanandajie, that person who died fighting poachers in the 1990s to protect the wildlife in Kokosili. So he is a local nature conservation hero. The people in Qinghai, in Sanjiangyuan, call him the soul of the Kekexili. I think he is also the soul of Sanjiangyuan, the soul of our national park. Poaching has extincted from that area. But the condition of patrolling, the condition of rangers' work are still tough. Many staff members, managers in Sanjiangyuan shared the hero's ethos. And to carry on the hero's legacy. I think this should be the culture of our national parks. So back to the first set of the keywords today, China's national parks. As you maybe remember from the previous lecture, Mr. Cao mentioned that our national park established in the era of ecological civilization. After the countries who built the national parks in the industrial society. What does that mean? What does the ecological civilization mean to us, to our national park? Of course, we can learn from other countries because we are the latecomer. As the latecomer, we can learn lessons from other countries and we can understand nature better with the science and the technology developing. Right. What else?
I think it means that our traditional culture is deeply rooted in the belief in harmony, man and nature. It means that many people have made efforts, have fights for and even sacrifice to achieve this harmony, man with nature. It means we have a greater opportunity and responsibility to protect our national park and to shape our national park culture in harmony with nature. So after building our national parks, can we completely solve the problems of our protected areas mentioned earlier? Is that enough? Okay, seeing our second set of the keywords, you should all know the answer. Yes, the answer is no. <laughs> so why does China propose the establishment of a protected area system? You can review the previous lectures and uh, what just I said, think about it. Okay, there are two main reasons for this. The first, national parks are only one type of protected areas. This has clearly reached a common understanding in the international community. We can see it clearly from the IOC in categories. National park is the category two of the, in the six categories of protected areas. The second, we have to solve the problems. The problems such as lack of system, low conservation efficiency, lagging of the legislation, overlapping of the boundaries, and so on. So national park, maybe national park is not enough for us. We have to establish the system of the protected areas. So how to establish the protected area system? In 2017, China's central government proposed establishing a, national, a protected area system with national park as the mainstay, marking the beginning of a reform our protected area system in China. So in the guideline in 2019, the guideline on establishing national park protected area system with national park as the mainstay for the first time, the main positioning of China's protected area is clarified. National park as the mainstay, as the main body. Nature reserves, which we started to build in 1956. Nature reserves was the, is the basis, the foundation. And the natural parks is the supplement, is the complement. So at present, uh, under the supervision and the promotion of the central government, the provinces, all the provinces are recognizing, re reorganizing of the protected areas and to do the spatial determination to avoid overlapping of the protected areas and to ensure there is only one type of protected area in each piece of land. And they also made some support policies. <clears throat> and there is some related work going on at the same time, such as the spatial survey of the land and the land ownership, and uh, also the ecological red line designation. So it is a complex work, and it is an ongoing work. What I'm going to share with you is a study that our team recently finished, which can reflect our thinking on how China should build a protected area system with the national park as mainstay. The study is about three.
Okay, this study is about the three parallel rivers area in Yunnan province in the northwest Yunnan, China. We call it bending the curve. This area is in northwest Yunnan with a total area of about 80,000 80, square kilometers. It is, uh, it is recognized as the national uh, as the World Natural Heritage, the three parallel river area is the uh, World Natural Heritage area. So this area has 20% of China's higher plant species and more than 84% uh, uh, of this site is in the world's biggest biodiversity hotspot. So from the diagrams, you can see the rich biodiversity and cultural diversity in this area. From the background research, we find that we need to find a way to prevent the curve from the biodiversity declining, and maybe even we have to bend the curve to recover. So in this study, we try to answer the questions how can we bend the curve? First, we do some modeling for planning. At the first step, the, uh, we stimulate the potential habitat. To map the potential habitat, we simulate some species suitable habitat areas. The selected species are Yunnan snub-nosed monkey, clouded leopard, and black-necked crane the birds, uh, and some general wildlife. Okay, they are the keystone species or flagship species. So the factors that affect the habitat include the attitude, the ecosystem, the landforms. Yeah, here we list it here. And we use some GIS model to simulate the potential habitats and corridors for essential species and general wildlife. The map showed the, okay. this map showed the simulation result. The green areas are the suitable habitat area and the corridors. And secondly, we simulate the urban and rural development to predict the trend. The results show the suitability area uh, for this site for the future development. The red, the red area is the suitable places for development of, for the urban and rural place. And then we identify the potential conflict between the conservation and the development. We find three challenges. The first one is the coverage of the protected area is inadequate. Although the protected area covers 26% of, of this site area, uh, it only covers 34% of the habitat we calculated, and only 9% of the potential corridors we calculated. The second, there are potential conflicts between urban development and the biodiversity conservation. 13% of the potential construction land threatened the protected areas, and 20% of the construction land threatened the important habitat. So plus them, 33% of the potential construction area will threaten the wildlife and the protected areas. The last one is the road construction has caused the fragmentation of the wildlife habitats. 96% of the potential corridors are cut by the roads. So let's see our proposal. Firstly, protected areas expansion. We do need more protected areas. So we did the proposal, we do the plan. 
the, in our proposal, the coverage of protected areas grows from 26 to 43. This is the original protected area size, and this is our proposal. It conserves, after the increasing, it will conserve more than 85% of the important habitat and more than 50% of the corridors. And we add two new categories to the protected area system. One is the national park, sure. And we propose the, to improve the function of the protected area system. Secondly, direction shift of the urban and rural development. Under the unique mode of the Chinese construction land supply, it can be feasible. Yeah, this is the analyze. So this is our, uh, this is our, uh, this is the previous trend. You can see, yeah, you can see it. Uh, according to our simulation, and the other one is our proposal, we, uh, in our plan, we reverse the northward trend, this one, northward trend to the south. So in the south area, the, uh, the ecological value and the sensitivity are relatively lower. So the plan also advocates a shift of lifestyle and industrial models. With a regulated protected area system, this area have more opportunity to develop clean energy, nature, education, ecotourism, and recreational activities. The third, keynote corridor construction. The plan proposed 156 corridors accounting for 52% of the entire potential corridors we calculated. So we have different building methods and the control policies in different areas, in the wild area, country area, and city areas. So in conclusion, in this plan, we identify the most important areas for conservation through the simulation, and we identify the trend of the urban and rural development. We propose to establish protected areas as the national park as the mainstay, and uh, we shift the direction and patterns of the urban development. We also have some proposals on uh, construct the wildlife corridors in key locations. So this is the way we provide to bend the declining curve of the biodiversity. What we want to express in this proposal is to reverse the curve of the biodiversity declining the construction of national parks and protected areas is important. We have the, we can have, we can find the sensible way to expand our protected areas and we do need more protected areas and national parks. But it is not enough. It still requires a change in the way urban and rural development. And we also need to preserve the possibilities for the wildlife movement in the rural area and in the city spaces. So the concept of ecological conservation as a top priority needs to be further extended to ensure our harmony between people and, man, and nature. Okay, here is the summary of today's lecture. <laughs> we mainly have discussed the such issues as what is the national park in China? Why China established national parks? How does China establish national parks with the Xianjiangyuan National Park establishment process? We know what is the path of the Xianjiangyuan. 
And the last, uh, how to establish a protected area system with the National Park as the mainstay, I introduced our Northwest Yunnan program. Here is the take home message. China has a unique historical background opportunities and practical conditions for building national parks and protected area systems. An excellent tradition of harmony between man and nature is our identity. China's recent reforms of the national park and protected area system has mainly included two aspects. One is establishment of the national park. The three major principles are protection as the top priority, national representation and benefit for all people. The second aspect is rebuilding the protected area system, including reclassification, layout the adjustment and policy support. It is an ongoing and complex work requiring more research, more multidisciplinary participation, and more participation of every one of you. The third, the establishment of China's national parks and protected area system is an important way to conserve biodiversity, address climate change, maintain national ecological security, and provide livelihood benefits to the people, as well as a critical initiative in the construction of China's ecological civilization. The last, in the process of the global nature conservation, China has the responsibility and the ability to provide the Chinese path and the Chinese wisdom. For further information, here is a list of videos and interviews of our national parks and protected areas just in these days. And these are the books. Uh, at, uh, this is the outcome of our team's research, of, uh, recently research, and uh, I think it will help you to continue to know more about the national parks and protected areas in China. And you are also welcome to make an appointment with me for further talk in my office hour, listed there. And uh, uh, by the way, mm, all the photos in my lecture are taken by me <laughs> and my students who had the field trips with me. So if you are interested in our experience and you are interested in nature, you are welcome to join us. That's all for today. Thank you.